So the super rich Pelosi objected to the billionaire tax in the $1.75 trillion spending bill. So let's get right into this story, but this kind of sounds like uh, it was all basically for show. But then again, when you really think about it, we are talking about someone who has gotten filthy rich from trading stocks in certain ways that seems kind of suspect, right? Because, you know, there's that whole saying where you can become an expert day trader, swing trader, by following Pelosi's stock trades. So House Speaker Nancy Pelosi took issue late last month with plans by fellow Democrats to levy a tax on unrealized capital gains to help pay for President Biden's massive $1.75 trillion social spending bill, reportedly describing it as a publicity stunt. So a senior Democratic aide told the Post that Pelosi's reservations, which were first reported by the Washington Post, were due to the fact that Senate Finance Committee Chair Ron Wyden had not finalized legislation for the billionaire tax by the time the White House was to submit an updated framework for the social spending plan. Pelosi was one of these several House Democrats to take issue with the billionaire tax, so-called because it is meant to affect around 750 of the wealthiest Americans. It's more of a stunt, Rep. Dan Kildee, a member of the House Ways and Means Committee, told Political at the time. So House Majority Leader Steny Hoyer said he was frankly and honestly disappointed with the proposal, while an anonymous Democratic member told the Post, while I believe the very wealthiest and most fortunate Americans must contribute more to investing in our future and paying for our past, example, the federal debt, Taxing the unrealized gains of a small subset of people is a difficult policy to craft, let alone enforce. That being said, I 100% agree. To tax gains, like unrealized gains, right, that are not technically real, right, is insane, right? It's like basically saying like, hey, you go buy that pizza for like $10, right? Right? Now, you don't eat that pizza for a week, right? That pizza somehow ends up becoming worth $20, right? So, the government is going to tax you on that gain of $10 for that pizza that you bought at $10, regardless if you ate it or sold it at all, right? Like, how crazy is that when you really think about it, right? Like, oh, you're going to get taxed on something that you haven't even sold, Right now, let's take it another way where it could trickle down to actually affecting everyday people. Right? Let's say that you were to buy a house, right? Your biggest purchase in your life, typically for normal American citizens, right? So you go buy a house for, let's say, $200,000, right? And you know, you probably did it through a mortgage because you're probably not making enough money or have enough money to buy it in cash. Right? So you put like 20% down or whatever kind of stuff, right? So let's say in that first year, that house increases in terms of worth $200,000 to now $400,000, right? Imagine if you're forced to pay taxes on that $200,000 growth, right? Without any change to your income. Do you realize how insane that actually is, right? Like, that, like, people think that this is only going to ever affect billionaires if they were to ever pass this, right? No, it's going to affect everyone because once they have some sort of law in place, they're going to start to try to trickle down to everyday citizens to try to make as much money as possible, right? And if you think that these billionaires who pay tons of money to lawyers can't find a way to skirt the rules or pay some politicians to leave a loophole for them to skirt the rules, right? You're insane, right? So the people who are going to end up having to pay it would be everyday citizens, right? And when your like biggest purchase right, is your house and it could be affected like that, right? Because of capital gains or your 401k, 
that you probably don't ever pay attention to you or your Roth IRA or your forced retirement plans if you're like a teacher or you're a cop or you're a firefighter and all this kind of stuff, right? Your pensions, all that kind of stuff, right? Imagine getting forced to pay taxes on something that you have zero control over, right? You have no control over the increase in perceived value, okay? Not real value, perceived value, right? It's just scary when you really think about it. So for her part, Pelosi told CNN at the time that some form of wealth tax would probably be included in the final form of the House bill, adding that it's only 10% of what we you need. Ultimately, the proposed capital gains tax was removed from the framework for the social spending bill in favor of a proposed 3% surtax on those earning more than $10 million per year, the Washington Post reported. Now, Pelosi is well known as one of the wealthiest members of Congress, though exactly how wealthy she is depends on the source. Campaign finance tracker Open Secrets pegged her net worth at approximately $114 million as of 2018. So in July, the website Go Bank on Rates estimated her net worth at closer to $120 million. So you can see why um, she would be also against a wealth tax because this would have a direct impact on her when you really think about it. Right, because this is probably a lot made by uh, stock investments for her uh, benefit of basically knowing potentially what is going to be passed and what companies are going to benefit from it. Last year, Open Secrets listed Pelosi as the sixth wealthiest person in Congress. Behind then Rep. Greg Gianfort or Gianfort, Rep. Paul Mitchell, Rep. Vernon Buchanan, Rep. Don Bayer, and Rep. Dean Phillips. So far this year, the speaker raised and received more than nine million dollars, according to campaign finance data from the Federal Election Commission. In total, Pelosi's campaign committee has raised over sixty-three million since nineteen. 19- 89. Wow. She is getting up there in age. So here's the thing to really understand too, right? One, you got to ask yourself, why are politicians worth nine figures when their salaries are not even in the seven figure range? Just think about that for a second. Right? What the hell is going on? Right? And this is the problem that I see with a lot of people in terms of how they vote and how they view politics. Right? Don't trust these politicians like they are your family member. Right? Because they're going to do everything in their own best interest, which can be seen just from Every single one of their bank accounts, 10-folding, 20-folding, 1,000-folding, you know, who knows, right? It's basically like every single one of these politicians basically bought into Sheba early on and became super wealthy, right? And the thing is, again, the thing that we mentioned a little bit earlier in this uh, episode, people have made a lot of money trading the exact same stocks that she does because, you know, who knows how she knows exactly what's uh, going to happen in terms of legislation that could benefit or potentially destroy industries or companies. Feel free to give your thoughts. But if you want to learn how to get out of debt so that you don't necessarily care too much what these politicians are doing and you have more freedom available to you and live a better life, Go to 40inbox.com to learn how to get out of debt.